Hey guys, what's up? It is Ripe again, back with a mix of Revenge and Entitled People's Stories. Without wasting any more time, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled Block the Property of a Farmer, Manure Spreader Revenge, Never Mess with a Farmer. I live on a pretty decent sized farm in the countryside. The town nearby is not super huge, but it is not so small to where everyone knows each other. I have really enjoyed being not just a local farmer, but also a resident of this lovely town. I have lived on this property for quite some time now, but have turned it into a small farm operation to make a little extra cash during my retirement. Although I do not technically need to farm anymore, I'm pretty well off, I still enjoy it and it helps the local families keep their costs down. I have had several people offer to buy or manage the farm for me, but I see no need. Sometimes my grown kids or grandkids will come help, but I am a one-man operation. The farm is small enough to keep it that way anyway. On top of people trying to help me out on the farm, I have also had several people try to buy the farm for me. 99% of the time they are respectful when I tell them no, I don't ever plan to sell my farm or property. Even if I'm not farming until the day I die, I want my kids or grandkids to inherit the property. Well, everyone has been nice about it except for this one guy. And not to stereotype or anything, but he was not from our community. He was from a big city about an hour or two away and was interested in buying land slash property that he could convert into factory farming. He may have been some type of investor in this big farming company. Anyway, I'm not really sure, but that's not the point. He had come to my door one day and asked me if I was ever really interested in selling it. In this case, obviously guys, selling means selling his farm property. He was also looking to buy the property across from me, which is an old abandoned house that sat on about one acre of land and wanted to buy mine to make his land even bigger. I politely told him that no way I would never sell my land or property. He then rebuttals back by saying that I could still stay here and raise livestock and grow crops and everything, but there would be more industrial level operations. At this point I am a little offended, to be quite honest, I was not willing to sell myself and my passion out to just make a quick buck. Anyways, he did not take a liking to this, he really wanted to buy this land. A couple days after this, he had bought the property across from me and not shortly after that, construction began. There were a lot of working vans and trucks coming down the road and in and out in order to restore the property. I will give it to the guy, the house that sat on the property was looking beautiful and all the overgrown bushes had been taken care of. However, even with all of this going on, he was still trying to buy my house. And I was still saying no. As a matter of fact, now he was getting so angry at me for constantly refusing that he was starting to be really petty and passive aggressive. When he would come to inspect the property across from me, he would park his big brand new SUV in front of my house. One day it had been out there for a while and I was trying to back out of my driveway to visit my daughter across town. I could not get out of my driveway because his truck was blocking, so I was going to take pictures and file a complaint with the local police department. I did not care that he was doing construction and renovations, he was blocking my driveway to be petty. Well, he saw me taking pictures of the license plate and called the police on me because he said I was looking suspicious and probably going to steal his car. Okay, whatever that means, I explained to the police the situation and they just gave the guy a verbal warning. Well, a couple of days after this, I had hired a muck spreading service to help me out on the farm. Anyways, I was not at home, but told the workers I would arrive shortly after they did. I was picking some stuff up at the store when they called me and told me they could not start the job because there was a big SUV blocking the way to get in. My land was fenced in, so they could not get in through any other way. I told them not to leave and that I would be right there. Upon arriving, it was not surprising that I saw the same guy's SUV blocking the drive through path. At this point, I was really tired of this guy. Not only had he harassed me, but he was being an ass just because I did not want to sell him my property. I told the workers to host their equipment to spray the muck as best as they could from the fence, knowing damn well it would get on this guy's car. 
Did I care? No. The workers happily obliged and before you knew it, the side of the guy's SUV was covered in muck and manure. The guy actually pulls up with some other people in a work truck and immediately starts yelling at my workers. I stepped in and asked if there was a problem. The guy says that he is pissed because I damaged his new expensive SUV. He then proceeds to pull out his phone and call 911. City folk, huh? A little manure and they think the police needs to get involved. Anyways, the police come and tell this guy that they cannot help him because the workers followed my instructions and all the work was done on my property. Also, his car was actually parked on my property, so he was out of luck. He must be regretting buying that property across from me now. And yeah, ripe stars, as seasoned veterans of Reddit, we of course all know you never mess with a farmer. Because if you do, you will surely be on the butt end of the stick. Either way, if you enjoy the stories about crazy neighbors and awesome farmers, then I would really appreciate it if you could post some star emojis in the comments and maybe even like the video, if you wanna go the extra mile in terms of supporting my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your help is very much appreciated. The next one is titled, I guess that's not my child then. I saw another post about people being weird about kids and thought you all might enjoy this. Earlier this week I took my toddler son, 3 years old, to the local supercenter for a grocery run. He loves going and really loves interacting with people, which is perfect because it makes store runs easier since he enjoys it. Let me start by saying that he looks nothing like me, to the point that had he not been in the room with me the entire time after giving birth to him, I might wonder about being switched out for another kid. He is extremely fair skinned, blonde hair, blue eyes, I am pale but not quite as translucent as he is, dark hair, day eyes. So we are walking around and picking up what is needed and a woman, I won't say a Karen necessarily, but we will call her Barbara, older, mid 60s maybe, grandmotherly, starts talking to him. Hi sweetie, are you having fun with auntie tonight? I bet your mom is enjoying her night off. I'm not offended because this is not the first time I've gotten this so I just smile and say I'm actually the mom, we're just running some errands and having fun. Barbara, oh that's a boy? What pretty hair, but you cannot be the mom, he does not look like you. Me still smiling, oh trust me I know, but he is definitely mine. Barbara, he is adopted then, he's not yours. Me, confused now, he's definitely mine, I pushed him out, pretty sure I would know. Barbara frowns, then you are to blame for his hair being like that, he looks like a girl. My son has long hair, it is past his shoulders to the middle of his back, it is beautiful and healthy and absolutely gorgeous. If he asks me to cut it I will, but until then I am letting myself enjoy it. I myself have very short hair in a faux hawk style. I should have obviously walked away, but this is a hill for me to die on and I've had a lot of arguments about his hair with complete strangers, so this is a topic I'm ready to throw down on. It's pulled back when it is hot out like this night and to keep it out of his face. Me, I like his hair, it is too pretty to cut. If he wants it cut, he will tell me and we'll get it cut. Until then, I'm letting it roll. Barbara, he looks like a girl, girls have long hair and boys have short hair. I run my hand through my spiked up hawk, kind rub the back of my head where it's taken down to a, really, what does that make me? At this point she took her card and walked away with one more, he looks like a girl and you're making him look like a girl. I wish I knew what it was about kids that made people so weird. The whole time he was playing with his monster truck toy we had picked up, but when she walked away he waved happily and gave a nice little bye. The next one is titled Granny Confusion. A few weeks ago I was working the lawn in my new house. I had just moved in with my wife and we were really working hard to make the place homey. I was already finishing up the lawn when I saw an old granny slowly walking towards me. I turned off my lawn trimmer so I could say hello and not have anything fly towards her. When she came up she kindly asked me, excuse me how much do you charge per lawn? 
I looked at her a bit confused, but after remembering my attire, I had a hat, some gloves and safety glasses on, and since I was new in the neighborhood I understood that she had mistaken me for a gardener. I looked at her and said, hello, how can I help you ma'am? She kindly told me that she wanted her lawn mowed, but she does not have much money as she lives alone, and then asked if I was willing to take 20 for the work. I looked at her place and saw that the lawn in question was incredibly out of control, as if it was not mowed in months and since it was a small area, I told the kind granny, don't worry ma'am, I will take care of it. The deed took me almost 20 minutes to finish mowing and an extra 10 to take the trimmings and clean the surrounding area. After I was done, she came out of her small house with a tall glass of water, which I accepted gladly and proceeded to hand me the money. That is when I said, don't worry about that ma'am, I'm not a gardener, I'm actually your new neighbor. I did it because I wanted to, not because of the money. She immediately apologized for the confusion and told me she was ashamed to ask me something like that. I told her to not worry about that and that it was something I did out of the bottom of my heart and if she needed help with her lawn, please call me again. She began to cry and thank me profoundly and began to tell me her story. Turns out that she was living alone for a while and that her husband died a few months ago and she did not have anyone to help her as all her children were living in the US. After the tale she thanked me again and we went our separate ways. Now every time I help her with her lawn, she always gives me a bag of fruit from her mango trees or banana trees and a tall glass of water. And the next one is titled, I don't own this fence. This is actually an I don't live here story. A few years ago I was walking my dog past a rowboat club place where they do races and lessons. Sometimes for events the parking lot gets pretty full and it was one of those days. As I walked past the parking lot an angry gentleman got my attention. Disgruntled rowboat boomer, you really need to fix that fence, it's been like that for 6 months. He gestures to the fence between the rowing club and the house next door which is broken and has fallen across part of the parking lot. Me, confused but trying to be sympathetic, I'm sorry, I don't work here. Him, I know that, but that's your fence, so you need to fix it. Listen, I know it broke because of all that heavy snow we got this winter, but it's been six months, it is taking up two, maybe three parking spots. Me, oh that's not my house either. He scowls in utter disbelief. What do you mean that's not your house? Me, I'm just walking my dog, I live half a mile away. I've seen you around here, it's not that hard. You pick up a phone book, you look up fence repair, it is just absolutely ridiculous. Every time I come here, it's a giant pain in my butt to find parking. Me? That's really annoying, but I don't live there so I cannot help you. Well, she's your neighbor then, can't you tell her to fix her fence? Me? She's not really my neighbor, like I said, I live half a mile away. But you talk to her, I saw you talk to her, this has been going on for 6 months and nothing's changed. I realized he just wanted to yell at somebody, so I finally walked away. I wish I threw his phone book comment at him and told him he should look up any random person and yell at them instead, they have just as much to do with this as me. And yeah ripe stars, I'm curious, has anyone ever mistaken you for somebody else? Obviously here in Thailand where I live that's not too common that somebody mistakes me for somebody else. Because in general I would say that Thai society is a pretty homogenous society and for example a foreigner would never really be mistaken for a delivery driver or gardener or something and the reason for that is because we are not really allowed to do these kinds of jobs in the country. The next one is titled, I almost got killed. I, 21 female, am a dialysis patient who is handicapped, wheelchair bound. I was going to turn 18 when dialysis began, I cannot have a fistula, so I have a permacath. Now I have a tendency that my permacath gets blocked in 3 to 4 months. Now my permacath was blocked and the doctor suggested an anticoagulant injection for the blockage. The duration was of 14 or 15 hours because it was pushed through a machine very slowly. The thing with anticoagulant is that it can start internal bleeding or some more dangerous stuff which I don't remember now. I was in ICU because of risks, I'm a patient who cannot be without my mom, she takes care of everything as I am in a wheelchair. The nurse in ICU are particularly worse. They don't let relatives come inside, but my doctor had given permission for my parents and now I was in the ICU and beside me was an elderly man with lots of pipes. 
He was awake but just couldn't speak. My mom was coming many times because I needed help. One particular nurse was very entitled. She used to think that she is the owner of the ICU. She gets angry when my mom comes. Now, injection was over and the ICU doctor, an entitled nurse, EN, was checking flow. I was lying down, the flow was perfect, I was delusional because of other meds. The thing is that EN left the permacath open and went along with the doctor. As I was delusional, I said to drink water. As soon as I said, blood started pouring out. I don't know how much blood came out, but I got dizzy, oxygen dropped and I fainted. The man who was inside the bed started hitting his hand on his bed and started making noise. The EN came running, she saw and started closing the permacath. The damage was done, the whole bed, my clothes, all things were filled with blood. Same moment my mom came, the conversation went as follows. Mom, what happened? EN, she started bleeding. Mom, how? EN, you should explain to her not to sit anytime she wants. What? She has back problems, she cannot lie straight and she is delusional. First of all, go out, you're not allowed here. I have permission. Not my permission, get out this moment. So my mom went out and EN starts cleaning before my doctor came. She forcefully removed me from my bed and cleaned everything. Later when I gained consciousness my parents explained what happened. Next day I got discharged and when I reached home, the first thing I did was I complained about her on the hospital website. She was called in and was fired. People came to know that there were many patients with her with complaints and who suffered because of her carelessness. She always used to clean everything before the doctors came and the ICU doctors used to support her. At least in this story there is a happy ending. And the next one is titled Sydney, Australia, got myself in a stupid situation ranting with an ex and his friend. If I'm not on the lease, can I just move out and cut power slash gas slash rent without legal problems? Three years ago, I moved in with my boyfriend and his flatmate to a small house they are renting. They are both on the lease and I am not. I have no excuse but to say I was younger and more stupid with stars in my eyes when I moved in with him and I ended up with gas and electricity in my hand and I collect the rent from them and pay it every fortnight. It started like that because they worked and I did not at the time and I had time to organize bills. It worked okay for a little while until after we broke up. It was an amicable split out of boredom more than anything else and there's not much bad blood between us over the split. However, they are both getting lazier and my ex lost his job last year and is taking his time finding another one. He's more likely to be spending time gaming than looking for work and if he's not gaming, he is getting stoned with our other flatmate. So far the other two owe me at least 8 weeks of back rent that I've covered so they are caught up with the estate agents and at least 2-3 month bill cycles for gas and electricity. That is not to mention food and I usually end up paying for most of what we all eat. At the state their work is in with my ex unemployed and the other flatmate on lower hours than before, together they cannot afford to pay the rent and utilities even if they were forced to. We have had several arguments about it since last year and they promise to find more and better work but nothing comes of it. I'm drained constantly pushing them to pay for everything in the place they are living in. I am not on the lease at all, another job that fell to me was pushing them to get off their asses and resign when their renewal came up in October last year so I know the paperwork site well. Both my ex and the other flatmate insist that I cannot just move out and stop paying because it would be illegal and like an eviction because they would have to break the lease and they insist I cannot just cut off the utilities because we had a spoken agreement that I would handle those bills. If I push the point that I need to get them to take over the utilities, they refuse, beg me not to force them to or promise they will do it as soon as work calls in more hours. That has not happened once. I came across legal advice a few weeks ago and a couple of times I have seen the advice to never take legal advice from the other side's counsel. And essentially they are my opposing side and I've been scared into staying. So from where I am now with me not on the lease but paying electricity, gas and covering more and more of the rent they need to pay and I've been doing it since late 2016, am I able to just move out and cut those utilities? 
Without them voluntarily taking over the electricity and gas, I would have to phone the suppliers and just cut off supply and the rent I pay in cash every fortnight, so I would just stop doing that. I also pay for most of the food, but since I would not be living there, that would not happen. The amount they owe me is in the thousands, but I am willing to cut my losses there and just leave it if it is legal. Would that be legal to just go and leave them to what they cannot afford? And a user in the comments said, yep, speak to your utility providers to get advice how to get those shifted out of your name, either just before you leave or shortly after, but apart from those accounts you have zero obligations to your deadbeat ex and his mate. Once you leave you can pursue what the other pair owe you, but I'm guessing you have very little documentation of who paid for what, so that may be a struggle. And OP, you are not quite clear with the second paragraph, but there's nothing wrong with moving in without being on the lease, and there's nothing wrong with putting the utilities in your name. Where you went wrong was when you began to let them get away with not paying their share. But we all learn from experience. And another user said, obligatory not a lawyer, but if you are not on the lease then you have no obligation to remain there, in other words you are not breaking any contract if you leave. Do you have any documents, text messages, emails, notes etc. that shows they agreed to pay you money for bills and rent and your portion etc. If I were in your position I would find a new place ASAP, keep paying your share of the rent, keep paying utilities and get it in writing from everyone that they owe you some portion of previous utilities and rent that you have paid. Also start issuing receipts and or document everything when someone gives you money or ask to do it via bank transfer. Once you find a place or if you have already have somewhere to stay, give them a week or two worth of notice that you intend to vacate, you don't need to stay there for that period of time, but it would probably help you in the future if they pursue you at all if you pay your portion of rent for that period of time. In addition, cancel the utilities and follow it up with NCAT if they don't give you the money they owe you. It sounds like you've got a good head on your shoulders and are trying to do the right thing, just document everything. Update to the rent story from before. This has all blown over here finally, more a drama update than a legal one, not long after I posted last I lined up my move out date, let my housemates, my ex and his friend know in writing that I was going to move in two weeks and would no longer be paying the utilities in my name. Both of them told me I would not be moving out. I reiterated I was moving, one went back to the Xbox, the other got in a mood and went out and said we would talk about it later. I had a place to move to with a friend but that fell through because her boyfriend might be moving in. I was not going to spend any more time in the house now that I had committed to leave and worked out with my parents to move in with them for a few months. The day before the move I told both housemates that I would need them the next day to help me move, they said they wouldn't and I figured either they would end up helping or they would pull their usual lazy trick and avoid work and disappear for the day and it would make life even easier. They chose to take off somewhere else for the day and were out of the house by 8am. They never leave the house that early and rarely at the same time. My dad, a couple friends and I got all my gear out quickly and after the housemates and their a-holery I took everything I had bought. That included the television and the new Xbox, a sofa set, microwave and a few other things. I left a couple days food in the fridge. We double checked, left my keys taped to the fridge and took documentary photos of absolutely everything we could. Inside and outside the fridge, cupboards, bedrooms, fireplaces and in the ceiling crawl space. That night my phone blew up with calls I ignored from housemates but also the friend I was going to move in with that police had been looking for me and then the police arrived at my parents house to ask questions about my theft of everything my housemates owned. I told them the whole story and noted I had receipts for everything I took and that I had all the items with me. Nastiness got the better of me and I sent one message back to my ex telling him he could have anything I had taken from the house if he paid me for it in full, knowing full well they would not if they could, but could not anyway. He said he would pay a third and his friend, other housemate, would also pay a third and they would get the money to me after the TV and Xbox were returned. They were not worried about anything else, just the gaming gear. I did not reply and got a bunch more texts that turned more and more aggressive and they stopped after a month. 
Curiosity got the better of me and I checked in on them two weeks ago, maybe five weeks since I moved out and the house is vacant and for lease. I've heard nothing more from the police, though I did compile a booklet with a photo of every item I took from the house and its receipt along with a screenshot of my credit union statement where the money came out but so far have not had to use it. I have also kept an eye on my online accounts for the gas and electricity and there's no unusual activity there. I've been paranoid that they would phone up and say the disconnection was a mistake or somehow talk the suppliers into putting it back on in my name. I have not found a place to live yet but my parents don't want me to move out unless I really have to and they are closer to work anyway. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.